Uh, welcome, doctors. Thank you for joining a Techno Pharmaceutical webinar. My name is Dua Ud. I am a product manager at Techno Pharmaceutical. Techno Pharmaceutical is the first Egyptian uh, company specialized in female hormone production. Today's session uh, will be on the art of the ovulation induction and the role of the progesterone supplementation during a pregnancy journey. During the session, you will have the opportunity to submit your questions at the Q&A box. Uh, and uh, please mention the name of the, uh, uh, of the speaker with your questions. The speaker will reply all of them at the Q&A session after their presentation. Now I would like to welcome uh, Professor Ahmed Badawi for his session about the art of the ovulation induction in a PCO. Professor Ahmed is a professor of, of obstetrics and gynecology, Mansoura University, and the fellow of uh, Royal College of Obstetrics and uh, Gynecology and the director of Mansoura University Regenerative Medicine Center. Uh, Professor Ahmed, the mic is totally yours. Rahim first, I'd like to thank Techno Pharmaceuticals for allowing me to share with you some ideas about uh, the art of ovulation induction in polycystic ovary patients. Uh, actually, the polycystic ovary is a very enigmatic disease. To start with a few words about the physiology, just to remind ourselves, you know that for ovulation to occur, there should be hypothalamic pituitary ovarian axis entered. So if we have a problem with uh, the ovulation, so we are expecting the problem either to be present in the hypothalamus and the pituitary, or it's present in the ovary or in the connection in the Definitely, this is a very simplification of the problem uh, because a lot of uh, endocrine gland and cytokines and um, mediators are involved in the process, but mainly the problem is going to be uh, there. And accordingly, the WHO has a classification for the uh, anovulation, uh, which is uh, the group one, WHO one, it's the hypogonadotrophic hypogonadism. We expect from the name that the problem is going to be up there in the hypothalamus and pituitary. No gonadotrophin production, so there is no response of the ovary, and then we will have anovulation. And the group three, which is a hypergonadotrophic hypogonadism, the problem is down there in the ovary, so there is no negative feedback from the production of estrogen and progesterone. So the gonadotrophins will continue to be produced and we will have anovulation. There is the vast majority of the cases because these actually represent about 20% of the cases with the hyperprolactinemia. About 80% of the cases is the gonadotrophic hypogonadism. And polycystic ovary is the main player in this group. So polycystic ovary problem represents about 80% of the women with anovulatory infertility. So it's important problem. One in 10 women running on earth has got a degree of polycystic ovary actually. But as I told you from the start, it's very enigmatic. Just a few words about the method we are using in its diagnosis. We all know about the Rotterdam criteria. This is the most famous criteria we are using for diagnosis of polycystic ovary. Uh, the Rotterdam criteria say that if you have two out of the three, menacer irregularity, hyperandrogenism, or ultrasound picture of polycystic ovary, which is mainly two criteria, the large ovary, increased ovarian volume, or the presence of multiple small follicles less than 10 millimeters more than 12 scattered in the cortex. According to this criteria, Maybe we have meniscal irregularity in the form of oligomenorrhea. You put the transvaginal ultrasound scan, you find a picture like this, so you diagnose polycystic ovary, even in the absence of hyperandrogenism. But look at the process uh, of the manifestations of polycystic ovary. You will find that hyperandrogenemia is a key player in, and we do not believe that we will have polycystic ovary as a problem if we don't have hyperandrogenism. So I like the criteria of the Androgen Excess Society guidelines 
which say that there should be hyperandrogenism, whether clinical, like hirsutism, acne, androgenic alopecia, or on the lab level, high serum testosterone, index of androgen, dehydrated androsterone sulfate, there should be hyperandrogenism. And then you have either chronic anovulation or you have the picture of polycystic ovary. But hyperandrogenism uh, androgenism should be there. If you have a patient with polycystic ovary turning to your door, she is asking for uh, fertility because uh, she has got an operation. You diagnose her as polycystic ovary, then what you are going to do? First, you will ask her to change her lifestyle. Unfortunately, 50% of the polycystic ovary women are obese. And the obesity is bad because this will be a severe disease. It's more hyperandrogenic, there is increased insulin resistance. If you give medication to the patient, she will not respond properly. And if she will become pregnant, she will have a high rate of complication to her and to her baby. So, so I'll end. If you have an obese polycystic ovary patient coming to your door asking for treatment of infertility, are you going to give her the medications or not? Remember the recommendation of Adam Palin more than 10 years back that those patients should not be offered medications for treatment of infertility until they attain PMI of 30. At 30, there is still obese in parfine and when the PMI is more than 25 to 6 or more, the patient is overweight, 30 or more, she is obese. She's still obese, <clears throat> but beyond 30, you will have a lot of problems associating the treatment. But always remember that the NICE guidelines and initial guidelines saying that if the patient is only going to lose 5% of her initial body weight, then this is going to improve her endocrinological environment and then her response to the medication is going to be proper. So what's first you are going to say to your patient? I want you to come down maximally, maximally within two months at least 5% of your weight. Your goal should be specific, achievable. This will not be achieved. Very realistic and timed within two months. Otherwise, the patient is going to be frustrated. Give her a target within a time, and then see her within this short time back. <clears throat> we all know this. There is no general agreement that there is a certain type of uh, diet is going to help the patient to lose weight. What you need to say to the patient, I want you to reduce the caloric, your caloric intake by about 30%. Yeah, now can a daily requirement of this ayana be 3,000 calories per day, for example, which is going to come down to 2,000 calories. If you want to say the ayana, how many calories are present in the ordinary food? At the end of the day, 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 the etc. And that's all the people can understand. She should reduce her uh, caloric diet but about 30 percent this is going to improve everything to the patient exercise what we need to say to the patient you need to walk 30 minutes athletic walk athletic walk per day for five to six days a week يعني العيانة تروح شغلها لو هي بتشتغل تروح وترجع من المشي in athletic walk يعني ما تتمشاش وهي رايحه لا ده انا عاوزها تتحرك in athletic walk at least 30 minutes per day for five to six days per week she is going to lose weight let's come to the drug therapy and before going to the drug therapy I want to be sure that we understand the difference between these terms عشان التعبيرات دي هنستخدمها كتير في المحاضره فانا I want uh, to to be sure that we all know the difference between uh, each term. Induction of ovulation, in the patient is anovulatory, and my target is monophilic blood development. 
But if the patient is already ovulating and my target is more than one follicle, is going to grow in the ovary, if that's more super ovulation, how ovarian stimulation. Controlled ovarian hyperstimulation, who was super ovulation, well, I can know controlled. Controlled as regard whatever, multiple follicle growth, controlled timing of ovulation, and prevention of premature relapse. And this is going to be achieved with the. Let's come to the oral agents we use for induction of ovulation or for ovarian. On the top, definitely the chromophene citrate. Chromophene citrate is an old medication. Now, good for market value, to even 60 years. It's very successful. It can cause ovulation 60 to 70 percent uh, within three to six uh, cycles of use. But on the other hand, it's going to achieve pregnancy in 15 to 30 percent only of the patient. The Ramen Enu successful kid, but you are expecting about 30 to 40 percent of the patient are not going to become ovulating on uh, the chromophene cytrate, what we call the chromophene resistance. Chromophene resistance man, I have failure to achieve ovulation after two cycles of standard uh, use of the chromophene cytrate. And about Chahrim best in the use of chromophene cytrate, I can say that this is chromophene resistant. I'm going to do something else or I'm going to shift to another medication. Wahalina clever. مين الناس اللي هيبقوا كلوميتين ريزيستنت من قبل ما نبتدي كلوميتين سيتريت هم الناس البوكيز الهايبر اندروجينيك اللي اكسبكتد موفين انسر ريزيستنس وجدوا ان هم دول يعني لما تجي لك عيانه بقى خينه باين عليها انها هارسيوت او فيها اكني وي ار اكسبكتنج ذا 75% اوف ذوز بيشنتس ار جوينج تو بي انسر ريزيستنت لما هتديها الستاندرد دوز بتاع كلوميتين سيتريت يو ار ويستنج تايم بيكوز شي ويل نوت بيكام اوف في حاجة تانية اسمها كلوميثين فيلير، كلوميثين فيلير معناها ذا بيشنت از اوفيوليتنج بات نوت بريجنت. يعني أنا ممكن أشخص كلوميثين ريزيستنس ويزن تو مانث بات أي نيد سكس مانث علشان أشخص كلوميثين فيلير. العيانة بديها كلوميثين ستريت بتجيلي كل شهر شي از اوفيوليتنج، البيريد بقت ريجولار بات شي از نوت بريجنت. وذا ديفرنس ما بين 60 تو 70% اوفيوليشن ريت 15 تو 30% بريجنسي ريت. طيب ليه ده بيحصل؟ تراديشنال تيتشنج كان بيقول لنا إنه احنا كلنا عارفين انه الكلوميثين ساتريت از استروجين ريسبتور بلوك وهو بيشتغل عن بلوك الاستروجين ريسبتور اب ذير وبالتالي بيمنع النيجاتيف فيدباك ميكانيزم فبيالاو الاف اس اتش تو كونتينيوسلي بي برودوسد وبالتالي هيحصل اوفيريان سيمبتوم انما في نفس الوقت از جوينج تو بلوك ذا استروجين ريسبتور لوكالي ان ذا يوتريس ويذر ان ذا سيرفكس اور ذا اندوميتريوم وبالتالي تراديشنال تيتشنج بيقول انه هيخلي السرفايكال نيوكس That it's more tenacious and thick, or the therapy penetrability by the sperm is, is going to be affected. But that is not proved right. The no matter what in the world is going to prevent 120 million sperms from going into the uterus. The other thing is that the blockage of the estrogen receptor on the endometrium make it thin. دائما احنا بنقول إنه لما نيجي نبص على العيانة بترانسفيجن ultrasound scan في day 11 or 12. ولقينا في فوليكلز موجوده في الاوفري وي هاف تو لوك ات ذا يوترس نبص على الاندوميتريا ثيكنس لو لقيت الاندوميتريا مش سن ليس ذان 8 ملم سو ذس از ان الرجيك ريسبونس تو ذا كلوميثين سايكل ما بيحصلش في كل العيانين تقريبا بيحصل في 10 ل 15% بس من العيانين دول وبالتالي اذا لقيت ان في عندك اوفيوليت اوفيوليشن كويس وثين اندوميتريا بليز بليز ستوب يوزنج ذا كلوميثين سايكل بيكوز ذس بيشنت ويل نوت بيكم بريك بس السبب الاساسي اللي بيخلي العيانين دول ما بيحملوش هو الفيرذر اليفيشن اوف ذا ال اتش لازم تبقى عارف انه بالميكانيزم اللي احنا اتكلمنا عنه الكلوميثين ساتريت بيزود الاف اس اتش بات ات ذا سيم تايم ات انكريز ال اتش اند ذا ال اتش از سينستيف تو ذا جروينج فوليكلز بادلي وخصوصا العيانين دول ال اتش اوريدي فيهم هاي طيب اديت العيانه كلوميثين ساتريت لقيتها ما هياش اوفيوليتنج او ما هياش اوفيوليتنج بروبرلي او ما وصلتش للسايز اللي انا متوقعه Within the time before announcing the clomiphene resistance of the patient, Haruch the more expensive and more complicated medication with more side effects. I'm going to do something healthy, hack to optimize the achievement of clomiphene sitrate. Badal, maul in mukhalas, it's failed. I'm going to another medication. Oh, let's try some tricks. For example, when to start the clomiphene sitrate. Kulina arfin in a clomiphene sitrate that it came in day one to day five of the cycle. 
ومن القواعد الاساسيه انه ذا ايرلير يو ستارت كلوميثين سايتريت ذا ذا مور ذا نمبر اوف ذا فاركلز ار جوينج تو ريكروت لان عارفين ان الريكروتمنت اوف فاركل اوكتير ايرلي ايفن بيفور ذا ستارت اوف مينستريشن فلو عديت اليوم الثالث ذن يو ار ديكريزنج ذا نمبر اوف ذا فاركلز هيبقى عندك وان اور تو فاركلز جروينج بس النمبر اوف ذا فاركل قليل فانت لو انت عاوز نمبر اوف فوركل كتير ستارت ايرلي فروم داي 1 تو داي 3 ابتدي اليوم الاول او الثاني او الثالث اتمنى بس لو العيانه انت خايف ان يبقى فيها اوفيان هايبر ستيميليشن ستارت ليت داي 4 او داي 5 هيبقى عدد الفوركلز اللي هيبقوا ريسبونسيف تو ذات اس اتش ات ذات تايم الحاجه الثانيه which dose you are going to use انتوا عارفين حسب المونوجراف بتاع الكلوميثين سايتريت you can use it between 1 to 5 tablets a day from 50 to 250 mg per day. But the studies that say if the patient is going to be ovulating, 45% of the patient ovulating will ovulate on 50 mg. When you add 50 mg, another 20% are going uh, to ovulate. Increasing one more tablet is going to increase 8% and no more ovulation will occur on higher doses. But the maximum dose we are allowed to use in the world is 150 mg. And I've never ever given the patient more than two tablets a day. تالت حاجة مهمة في الحاجات اللي ممكن نعملها علشان to improve the achievement of clomiphene citrate. Which duration? يعني هتستخدمه المدة هذه. من الفيزيولوجي بصوا للرسم الأولاني ده بيوريك هو تين سايت من غير استيميليشن. Normally there is what we call the FSH window. The FSH window دي دي بتبقى تقريبا من اليوم الأول maximally من اليوم الرابع بتاع. السايكل. الاف اس اتش ويندو دي هي الفتره اللي فيها الاف اس اتش بعالي قبل ما يبتدي الاستروجين يبروديوز بعد دي فوليك اللي يعمل ريدكشن بالنيجاتيف فيدباك وبالتالي الفتره دي هي اللي بيحصل فيها سيلكشن اوف ذا فوليك فلو انتم باصين تحت هتلاقوا ان اتس اونلي وان فوليك نورمالي جرو هي دي اللي بتحمل اكثر قدر من الريسبتورز اللي بيسموها فوليكول سيلكشن او سايت سيلكشن طيب لو انا عاوز اخلي بقيه الفوليكلز دي تكبر ايه الحل؟ هو ان انا تو كيب ذا ويندو اوبن وده بنعمله بان احنا بعد ما ناخد الكلوميثين سايتريت مثلا فور اكزامبل فيرست فايف دايز ذن وي ار جوينج تو كونتينيو وذ اف اس اتش ايجكشن طيب احنا بنستخدم الكلوميثين سايتريت لمده خمس ايام ليه؟ اكشولي ما فيش اجابه انت بتحصل عليها مقنعه الإجابة العلمية غالبا هي إنه الهاف لايف بتاعة الكلوميثين سايتريت از 7 دايز سو فروم ذا باست داي يو ار اكسبكتنج ذات انذر 7 دايز الإفكت بتاعه بيبقى موجود في السيبريشن بس اللي أنا عاوز أقول لك إنه من البايو افيلابيلتي الدراج بيبقى ريديوز الإفكت بتاعه جرادوال از جوينج تو فيد ويزن شورت تايم أه موجود في السيركيليشن لمدة سبعة أيام أتليست ولكن اتس نوت ذات إفكت إنما حقيقة الإجابة إنه أنت عندك 10 تقراص وبالتالي بتستخدمه غالبا نصين كل يوم لمده خمس ايام. So why not to use it for seven days or ten days? Why not to keep the window open by the chlorophyll citrate rather than adding the gonadal protein? Because the idea is one. And we had this trial here extending chlorophyll citrate uh, uh, treatment for any chlorophyll resistant. And I take one tab a day from day one to day ten. بدل ما تيجي قرصين كل يوم لمده خمس ايام try to give one tablet a day from day one of the cycle up to day 10. We have more follicles, more maturity and better pregnancy. اخر حاجه في الاستراتيجيز تو اوبتمايز التريتمنت اوف ذا كلوميثين سايتريت اللي هي دي اديشنز. الاديشنز او الادجيفنس از نوت اولترنتيفز يعني ما حدش يقول لي ان انا ام جوينج تو انديوس اوفيليشن بالميتفورم مثلا او بالبروموكرام او بالكوينزيم كيو 10. These are methods which are going to help the كلوميثين سايتريت rather than to be used alone. احنا اربع اللي دول لان هم دول دايما اللي بيظهروا في الكوكري بيت. اول حاجه دي هاتش سي جي. كلنا عندنا الهابت بتاع انك لما تيجي كلوميثين سيتريت وتلاقي في عندك فاركل 17 18 ملم يو ستارت تو جيف ذا انجكشن اوف 5000 انترناشونال يونت اوف هاتش سي جي. الجايد لاينز بتقول انه ذيس از نوت نيسيساري براكتس اكشن ومش هيضيف لك جديد. What you need, يعني أنت تبقى محتاجه علشان تعمل best timing of ovulation, not assurance of ovulation, timing of ovulation. وبالمناسبة في كل دول أوروبا لوجه timing ب ال HCG بيعملوه بالكيتس بتاعت ال LH. لما يحصل LH surge, so expecting that 
and 30 to 36 hours after the surge, the ovulation will occur. هو مفيد لما حتكون تعمل تايمينج للانتركورس علشان تعمل اي او اي وتايمينج اوف ذا هاسباند ويل كم ان ا سيرتن تايم بس انا عاوز اقول لكم حاجه اضافيه متعلقه بالاتش سي تي لما بتعمل ترانز فاجن الترا ساوند سكان وتشوف الفوليكل بتاعتك وصل 17 او 18 ملي وبنقول لك انها ماتيور واتس ريدي تو اوفيليت ذس از كوركت ان 60% اوف ذا كيس لانه في هذه الحاله انت يو سي ذا جرافين فوليكل يو دونت في نو ريتي مليمترز غالبا اللو سايت انسايد از ماتيو ويتش از كوركت تو تيل 60% اوف ذا كيس يعني ان 40% ما هياش ماتيو لو اديت ال اتش سي جي لان ماتيور او سايتس جوينج تو بيكم اتريتيك يعني هتصغر هتموت مش هيحصل لها اوفيليشن وبالتالي دايما افتكر ان في كل مره بتدي فيها ال اتش سي جي انجكشن يو هاف 40% شانس تو لوس ذا سايت سو واي تو جيف ات وبنقول لك لو انت محتاج انك تدي سو ويت انتل اتس مور ذان 18 ملم عشان تبقى شور ذات ذا او سايت انسايد از ماتيور تاني حاجه ده اورال كونتراسبتيف دوز From physiology, you understand that oral contraceptive drugs, which is combined with estrogen, progesterone, when you get it, is going to suppress the hypothalamic uterine ovarian axis. وبالتالي هيقل ال androgens, هتقل ال LH, وهيقل ال estrogen. وبالتالي it's a good practice. يعني the studies show that if you put your patient for one to three months on oral contraceptive drugs um, after failure of clomiphene titrate, for example, uh, resistance, or showed its resistance. لو حطيت العيان على الاورال كونتراسبتيف بيلز كومبايند اورال كونتراسبتيف بيلز فور 1 تو 3 مانث اند ري ستارت ات باك ا كونسيدرابل نمبر اوف بيشنت هيبقوا كلوميفين ساس ات شيب سيف اند افكتيف اجام التراك بقى في الاورال كونتراسبتيف ايه انك تقنع العيان اللي جاي عشان تحمل انها تاخد اورال كونتراسبتيف عشان كده بنقول لك انه ذا بيست تايم انك تو جيف ات لما يكون الزوج ما هوش متواجد فتقول العيانه 3 مانث بيفور كامينج ذا هاسباند از كامينج فروم ا برود مثلا فور اكزامبل هناخد الاورال كونتراسبتيف بيلز ات ويل جيف يو ريجولار سايكل بريفير يو فور ذا اندكشن اوف اوفيليشن وار جوينج تو دو ليتر نفس القصه بتنطبق على الجلوكوكورتيز لو بتدي العيانه ديكسا ميتازون فور اكزامبل اورال هتعمل ريدكشن للاندروجين برودكشن من السوبرينال جلاند مش من الاوفري وقالوا انها بتحسن فوليكولوجينيسيس وبتقلل باستايل ليفل بتاع ال ال اتش اللي هو اوريدي عالي في العيانين بتوع الكوليسترول فوان اوف ذا جود براكتس ان العيانه تاخد مع تين ساتريت أو سيم من الديكس هزون أورال أدى بيت فان. This is going to increase the responsiveness of the ovary to uh, the uh, colomphin cell. آخر حاجة uh, أنتم متوقعين نحن نتكلم عنها هي الميتفورم. أنا عاوز أقول لكم أنه the answer resistance is present in about 25 to 75% of the patients of polycyst ovary whether they are obese or not. لأنه هو ملوش علاقة مباشرة بالدهون. آه هو it's more in the obese. بس هو موجود في النان اوبيس بيشنتس برضه لانه بوست ريسبتور ديفكت والانسولين ريزيستنس از باد ليه هو باد؟ بيكوز سامبلي ات انكريز اندروجين بميكانيزمز كتيره يعني بيزود دايركتلي الاندروجين برودكشن فروم ذا اوفري بيزود ال ال اتش ستيميليتد اندروجين برودكشن بيقلل برودكشن اوف سكس هرمون بايندنج جلوبين وبالتالي بيخلي الفري اندروجين هاي بيزود الانسولين جروس فاكتور بيزود الاندروجين ات ذا اند اوف ذا داي هايبر اندروجينين از يوجوالي اسوشيتنج ويز انسولين الحاجة الثانية انه الهاي ليفل اوف انسولين بتقلل الجروس بتاع الفوليك سبيشالي ان ذا ميد سايز فوليك وبالتالي ان استخدمنا حاجة عشان تقلل الانسولين ريزستنس واشهر حاجة هي عندنا هي الميتفورمين اتس جوينج تو امبروف ذا ريسبونس والستاديز بتقول انه ميتفورمين بلس كولوميثين سيتريت از بيتر ذان ايذر ميتفورمين الون او كولوميثين سيتريت الون في العينين بتوع البوليستيك والجايد لاينز بتقول انه لو عندك عيانة بوليستيك اوفري شوود Resistance to the glomethene citrate will wait with a BMI after 25. She should be offered metformin with glomethene citrate. So primarily, I'm saying when you get a patient with obese polycystic ovary, you expect without it. And you're seeing the testing that the answer resistance in the time of human, the patient is doing fasting, insulin and fasting blood glucose. وهم بيضربوا دول في بعض وبعدين يقسموهم على 405 لو كان بالملي جرام او 22.5 لو كان بالملي مول وبيقول لك والله ده العيانه فيها انسر ريزستنس طالع اكتر من اثنين هيبقى العيانه ديفنتلي فيها انسر ريزستنس هي البوينت انه لو انت اكسبكتنج ان العيانه فيها انسر ريزستنس جيف هير برايمرلي ميتفورم ولو العيانه حملت على الميتفورم شي ويل كونتينيو اون 
الدوز بتاعت الميتفورمين اللي هنستخدمها قد ايه؟ الافكتف دوز حسب الستاديز هي حوالي 1500 ل 1700 ملي جرام بير دي 1500 ل 1700 ملي جرام بير دي يعني الدوز الصغيره اللي هي بتاعت قرص 500 ملي دي وسط الاكل مش هتفيد العيان بتاعك انت محتاج دوز كبيره انا غالبا بدي 1 جرام جلوكوفاج ان ذا ميدل اوف ذا سايكل فويس مشكلته انه بيعمل جاسترايتس والعيانه بيحصل لها فوميتنج احيانا فاخترعوا شويه بروتوكولز منها مثلا الميتفورمين بيفور ستارتنج ذا كروميفين ساتريت اند ات ورك ويل اكوردنج تو ذير ريزولت زي ما قلت لكم قبل كده الميتفورمين از سيف ميديكيشن يعني لو اتعطى ديورنج برينس ما عندوش مشكله انه اتعطى ديورنج برينس بالعكس انه الستاديز اللي هي كانت اتعملت اللي هي جلوك اند جاكوفيتس 2002 صحيح ما هيش replicated بس قالت انه the only way to reduce the first trimester and even the mid trimester portions which will care with the polystic ovary ان لو العيانة حملت وهي بتاخد متفورمين خليها تكمل على المتفورمين هيفيدها في حاجات كتيرة منها ان هو بيقلل abortion rate في نفس الوقت بيقلل the chance of having uh, the gestation diabetes تاني اورال ميديكيشن هو التاموكسفان، مفيش ستاديز كتير على التاموكسفان، ذا اونلي كومباريتيف ستادي اللي نشرناها في اليوروبيان جورنال، بت اكشولي الكلوميتين ساتريتس مور افكتف ذان التاموكسفان، يمكن البنفيت بتاع التاموكسفان انه مالوش افكت على الاندوميتيوم، مالوش افكت على السرفاكال ميوكس، اف يو اف يو دونت بيليف ان ذيس افكتس في الكلوميتين ساتريتس. انتوا عارفين في نظريه زمان كان جافت عملها 1966 سام اولد بتقول انه احنا وي هاف two types of cells present in the uh, graphene follicle. The theca cell, the outer layer, and the inner layer, the granulosa cell. So the theory is that under the effect of LH, the theca cell changes the cholesterol into, andro into androstein diet. The granulosa cell take the, andro take the androstein diet under the effect of FSH. It is the same enzyme, it is the aromatase enzyme, that has androgen elastin. يعني simply I have two types of cell اللي هما granulosa and theca cell and two types of granatrophines اللي هما the LH and the FSH and two end products اللي هما the androgen and this that's actually what's happening على level بتاع graphene follicle يعني ببساطة كل الاندروجين لازم لها الاروماتيز انزيم في أي تيشو including the ovary طبعا علشان تتحول إلى estrogen طيب what if we use the aromatase inhibitor استخدمنا حاجة to block this enzyme اللي هو السيتوكروم تي فور 50 هيحصل ايه بقى؟ هيحصل ان الاستروجين is going to be reduced much تقريبا 95% of the estrogen will be not formed لان المصدر بتاعهم الاول والاخير هو الاندروجين ولما يقل الاستروجين هيحصل ال FSH هيبقى released from negative feedback ويحصل ovarian stimulation وده الميكانيزم by which the aromatase inhibitors are used for induction of the مرت كتير الاروماتيز انهابتر الاروماتيز انهابتر بتستخدم في حاجات كتيرة قوي اشهرها بالنسبة لكم الكانسل بريست بس هي مرت بجنريشنز كتير انتهت the third generation هو available in the market letrozole and anesterol letrozole is an oral drug it's absorbed totally orally it's metabolized in the liver the half life بتاعته 30-60 hours versus the chromatin saturate اللي هو العريبة 7 days It's very important to have a reduction in estrogen up to 97 to 99%. Our report studied the use of the aromatase inhibitors for induction of ovulation came from Canada, Mitwali and Casper. They got 12 patients, clomiphene resistant. They do have aromatase, they do have letrozole, 5 mg per day, starting from day 2 or 3 of the cycle. Nine of them became ovulating, three of them became pregnant. And from this time, they started to use the aromatase inhibitors for induction of ovulation. الليترزول ميديكيشن بيتعطى تقريبا زي الكلوميتين ساتريت من قرص لغايه ثلاثه راس في اليوم 2.5 تو 7.5 ملغ ا داي فروم داي 1 تو 3 اوف ذا سايكل فور 5 دايز اكشولي وي ديد ا كومباريتيف ستادي منشوره في انجلترا ما بين uh, بتقارن ما بين ال 3 دوزز وي فاوند ذات ذا 5 ملغ از ا مودست دوز نيجي بقى للسؤال احنا عندنا Two good medications. The what? The letrozole and clomiphene citrate. Which one to come first? When we did the randomized control trials, we showed a fertility sterility in zaman, يعني بقى لها 13 سنة حاجة. We compared the two medications. للعيانين بتوع البوليستيك أوفر اللي بييجوا لأول مرة. We found no difference. ما بين الاثنين. 
and we compared حتى في العيانين بتوع ال unexplained you found no difference ما بين the two medications وكل ال randomized sorry ال meta analysis ال guidelines اللي طلعت في هذا الوقت سواء اللي احنا نشرناها ولا نشرها ريكوين في ال human reproduction applications are the same وبالتالي كل من في set rate should come first قبل ما نروح بس evidence available عاوز اقول لكم نقطة ثانية كانت ظهرت في هذا الوقت Uh, سنة 2005 يعني تقريبا 4 years after the use of uh, letrozole for induction of ovulation. Pelagen uh, عمل abstract في ال SRM 2005 قال انه uh, 150 babies has been delivered by letrozole وجدوا ان 7 of them has got major problems. 6 congenital heart problem 1 hepatocelial carcinoma. وده is a very high level بنتكلم على 5% من العيانين من الاولاد اللي اتولدوا بعد letrozole has got major problems. الدنيا اكشولي uh, توقفت في هذه في هذا الوقت فاتس فارما اللي هي الموليكيول بتاعها الفيمارا حطت على الويب سايت بتاعها انه الليترزول شود نوت بي يوز فور اوفيليشن اندكشن فور ذا بوتنشال اوف فيتال توكسيستي اند مالفورميشن اند ستيل نو فاتس فارما سو فار بتقول انه اليوز اوف الليترزول فور اندكشن از اوف ليبل يوز ولكن الستاديز اللي اتعملت فور ذا سيفتي اوف ذا دراج اللي مثلا زي نشرها بروجست يولانديا او اللي احنا نشرناها في الاكتا بتقول ان هو السيف دراج كان بي جيفن فور اندكشن اوف نرجع تاني للايفيدنس ويتش وان شود كم فيرست الاشري ان 2018 ببلش ذا جايد لاينز فور مانجمنت اوف ذا بوليسي سكوفري وجه في النقطه دي وقال ان والله وي هاف 13 راندومايز كنترول ترايلز لما حطيناهم سوا عملنا لهم ميتا اناليسيس ثبت ان الليترزول از بيتر ذان ذا كلوميفين سيتريت فور اوفيليشن يعني الاوفيليشن ريت او البريجنسي ريت او اللايف بيرث ريت they are both uh, they are all better in the letrozole arm عن مو في كلمتنس ريت ولكن الغريب بقى انه ما بيعملش مالتيبل يعني المالتيبل بريجنسي والمسكاريج ريت both drugs are the same بس رجع استدرك بعدها وقال انه if the patient is naive for therapy يعني العيانة لأول مرة بيتعمل لها ovulation induction both drugs are the same وبالرغم من انه قال كده راح الاشري للجايد لاينز which is poor power جايد لاينز قال ان الليترزول should be the first line pharmacological treatment for ovulation induction women's policy طيب اذا كانت العيانه المالتيبل pregnancy rate is the same miscarriage rate is the same الاوتكم سواء كان ovulation rate او pregnancy rate or life birth rate are the same if the patient didn't receive medication before so why I should start with letrozole Why should I start with a medication which is 30 times more expensive than the chromatin citrate? Well, I get any ample guidelines. Well, why have a literature? It can be expensive in this country. I'll prohibit it of its use in this country. Then you can use the other medication. It's not very convenient. Parenteral injection, I'm not going to speak much about the parenteral induction of ovulation. The school of Arfin and the market for urinary, purified, highly purified, HMG. Recombinant gonadotropins, long-acting gonadotropins. The studies that tell us that the second line after the oral therapy is going to be the induction. When we go to the head-to-head comparison, I'm not sure if I can tell between the oral and the injection. And definitely, the injection is going to be more effective or more successful. The second thing I want to consider is that we are using gonadotropins. For the induction of ovulation. Of course, every time we start with an injection, I have a police ovary, which is really classic police ovary. Hot ED on the head. Because they are they have the police ovary with the studded mole, with the bag that is not very sexy or very sorry. Sorry, I'm 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 The injections, my first response. The injection, my first response. And suddenly, she is going to give you this picture, and you cannot stop it. High rate of multiple pregnancy and ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome, which is lethal in some of these patients. خود بالك من الجزئية دي ما تخليش العيان بتاع البرس أوفر يستدرجك while you are using the gonadotropins for induction of ovulation. لازم to monitor frequently, frequently, أكتر من أي عيان تاني. And how to prevent it? Actually, there are strategies. Of course, definitely monitoring is important. But if you use the gonadotropins, you have some tricks. For example, the low-dose step-up protocol. You take the nose, or even one injection. I give one injection for seven days. 
وبعد سبعة أيام تعمل ترانس فاجينا اترا ساوند سكان لو كان عندك فوريكلز أكثر من 10 مليمتر يو ويل كونتينيو ويز وان انجكشن افري داي until it reaches 17 to 18 millimeters. بول ونص وتكمل عليه كل يومين تبص على العيانه وصلت 10 ملم اور مور ذان يو كونتينيو اون ذا سيم دوز ما بترفعهاش الا لو ما فيش ريسبونس حتى في الكرونيك لو دوز هو ابطا من كده شويه يعني احنا اول مره نعمل تشيك بعد 14 يوم لو لقيت مور ذان 10 ملم فوليكلز جروينج ذان يو كونتينيو اون ذا سيم دوز اذروايز يو انكريز باي 50% افري 2 تو 7 دايز لغايه ما توصل كونسيدرابل سايز بتاعك تعمل التريجرنج لو انت عاوز تعمل تريجرنج ما تعملش تريجرنج لو عندك اكثر من ثلاثه فوليكل 3 فوليكل زور مور ذن يو ويل هاف ذا تشانس اوف مالتيبل بريجنت لو انت مش عاوز تعمل تريجرنج خالص ما تعملش تريجرنج خالص دايما السؤال اللي احنا بنساله طيب لو البروتوكول بتاعك ده اللي بيكمل لمده 20 ولا اكثر من 20 يوم از ذا اندوميثيوم ويل بيكم هيلثي علشان العيانه دي تحمل اه Theoretically speaking, the مفروض إن الاندوميتريم be grow according to the amount of estrogen produced from the ovary. وبالتالي لو طولت في المدة هو كمان حيطلع. You can combine both oral and injection. I've never ever for simple induction give the patient injections alone إلا لو العيانة كانت hypo hypo تنتمي إلى المجموعة الأولانية اللي هي WHO1 اللي ما فيش فيها gonadotropins أصلا. إنما عيانين بوليست أوفر it's better to combine the oral with the injection. To combine them ازاي؟ والله ده حاجه ترجع لك انت شخصيا، اشهر حاجه انك تدي الاول اورال ويذر انك هتدي كلومثين سيتريت ولا الكروزون لمده خمس ايام، بعد كده بتاخد العيانه وان انجكشن كل يوم لغايه ما تبقى عندك 17 18 ملي فوليكلز ذن ذي ار ماتيور اند اتس ريدي فور اوبيليشن. او ممكن تديه بهذا الشكل، يعني ما فيش بروتوكول محدد يا اما تدي واحده كل يوم يا اما تدي ساي مثلا واحده في اليوم التاسع، واحده في اليوم ال 12 او 13 اف يو نيد You can give while you are giving the oral واحدة في اليوم الخامس واحدة في اليوم التاسع واحدة في اليوم ال12. حدش يقول لي طيب لما انا اسيب سبيس كده ما بين اليوم التاسع ويوم ال14 ده هيعمل مشكلة للعيان؟ لا خالص مش هيعمل أي مشاكل للعيان. It's it's autonomous growth autonomous growth العيانة دي عندها normally FSH produced ففيها autonomous growth. وبالتالي you are pushing أنت بتزق العجلة بس علشان تجرب. وبالتالي افتكر دايما إنك You have to avoid the risk while you are using the gonadotropin. Low dose, combined oral, close ultrasound monitoring. ما تعملش triggering خالص أو لو مضطر تعمل triggering ما تعملش لو عندك three follicles or more present in the ovary. آخر حاجة هي the laparoscopic ovarian granule. Is it really a method for induction of ovulation? I don't believe it. بس خلينا نلوكو العلم بيقول. العلم بيقول إنه the ovarian granule has a chance has an advantage over The injection, and now it adds the chance of multiple pregnancy. It adds the chance of ovarian hyperstimulation. Into our fine figure, and we do drilling, and we do holes for the oocyte to come out. Same time, we do the tunica. Same time, the main function is we do drilling for cauterization for the androgen secreting tissues that are present in the ovary. We do the hyperandrogenemia, etc. The studies rule in the effect of one year after drilling is similar to the effect of three to six months of injection. I don't believe in that. Then I know in the polycystic ovary is a medical disease. Goes in a مهم جدا. إنك لما تيجي تعالج أي عيانة تبغى عارف which is medical, which is surgical. Polycystic ovary is definitely medical disease. بتعالج بالmedication. Fibroid is surgical disease. بتعالج بالsurgery. Medications you are giving just to stop the blood improved general condition of the patient pass by sometimes. Enema is not a treatment. Prolapse is surgical disease. Endometriosis with infertility is a surgical disease. Endometriosis with pain is a medical disease, etc. Polycystic ovary is a medical disease. 60% the chance of having a patient pregnant on the injections are in orals within six months. And now the chance of having the pregnancy or normal menstruation or ovulation in patients with laparoscopic ovarian draining in six months doesn't exceed 30 percent. So, بالتالي هو the chance of being successful. وده مهم وانت بتعمل counseling for the patient. ما تقولش العيانة احنا نعمل draining of the ovary الدنيا هتمشي كويس لأنها 70 في المية مش هتمشي كويس. And now you have to tell the patient that we are improving the chances of the ovary. لانه يبقى مور سنسيتيف، اكشولي ذا فانكشن اوف لابروسكوبيك اوفيريان دريلينج 
is to improve the responsiveness of the ovary to the induction. Ayana data induction of ovulation with oral or even some sample medications. In the Hala family drilling, I'll put her back on uh, the oral medications, she will become responsible. Let me finish with this. In the world of who have not, if you have a patient with an ovulatory problem, she's polycystic ovary, you have to go this way. Ask the patient to modify her lifestyle, let her lose weight. The sample hypocaloric diet when they have family exercise, the sample athletic movement for 30 minutes. After two months, losing 5% of her weight, you start to give her the oral medication. Stick to the clomiphene citrate. Clomiphene citrate is a good and cheap medication. And they try to use some of the tricks to improve the performance from the start, from the dose, from the duration of giving, from adding some adjuvant is going to improve uh, the clomiphene citrate. Rate. And continue for three to six months if your patient is young. If she is not, if there is failure or if there is uh, resistance, then you move to another uh, medication like Veletrozole. Three to six months, the patient is not responsive, then you can go for the gonadotrophines or ovarian drilling according to your choice. Within two years, you push the patient to the IVF if she is not pregnant. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Ahmed, for this great presentation uh, and thank you for your attendance. As a reminder, uh, dear doctors, you can still submit your uh, questions at the Q&A um, box to be answered at the uh, Q&A session. Now let me welcome uh, Professor Atef Ismail uh, for her uh, session about the proge progesterone supplementation during uh, pregnancy. Professor Afaf is a professor of obstetrics and gynecology at Azhar University and the former head of the Department of Reproductive Medicine at the John Hopkins uh, USA and the former head of obstetrics and gynecology uh, at Azhar University Reproductive Health Consultant. Professor Afaf, the mic is totally yours. أستاذ أمراض النساء والتوليد في كلية الطب جامعة الأزهر الحقيقة محاضرتنا النهاردة عن رول of progesterone supplementation in pregnancy journey progesterone زي ما احنا عارفين كلنا is a steroid hormone produced by the corpus luteum of the ovaries, placenta and adrenal gland in early pregnancy, progesterone is critically for pregnancy maintenance until the placenta take over this function uh, between 8 to 12 weeks of gestation. Uh, progesterone is important in maintaining uterine quiescence in a half, later half of pregnancy. However, the mechanism is unclear. Uh, very important, any change in the level of progesterone is very significant, uh, especially in producing uh, preterm labor and delivery. Usually, uh, progesterone prevent apoptosis in fetal membrane, uh, where also prevent the flu inflammatory uh, conditions, uh, which is important to protect the membrane from preterm premature rupture of membranes and the preterm birth. Uh, progesterone supplementation enhances this action, which is likely mediated through progesterone receptors. We have to know the molecule of progesterone, the chemical structure, the molecular weight. This is very important for the basic knowledge. Uh, nobody uh, deny the effort of this 
visions of progesterone discovery and isolation. Uh, started in 1929 by uh, Professor Allen, uh, who worked in uh, the uh, Corpus Luteum of uh, rabbits, uh, and uh, Mr. Adolf, and Mr. Carl, and Honor, uh, who starting to make uh, between 1951 and 1952, starting the uh, synthetic progesterone. Uh, as we all know, uh, the uh, mother nucleus of progesterone is cholesterol. Uh, وطبعا uh, مش هندخل في ال ال basic uh, 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 um, um, biology uh, لأن إحنا لازم نبقى عارفين علشان يكون البروجيستيرون it's depend on the theory of the two cell uh, theory uh, and the two gonadotropins uh, theory uh, this picture shows the blood transportation of the hormone through the protein and this is very uh, important, uh, especially uh, for the bioactivity of progesterone. Uh, mechanism of action of progesterone is uh, very important, uh, like many of the steroid uh, hormone uh, and the uh, entrance of this uh, uh, hormone through the cell membrane and make transcription in the uh, DNA of the nucleus. Uh, the history of natural progesterone, uh, never ending story. Why? The term of progesterone should only be used for natural hormone produced by the corpus luteum of the ovary or included in registered drugs. Uh, Odnoff, as I mentioned his name, succeed in converting pregnandiol uh, into chemically pure form of progesterone uh, identical to the corpus luteum hormone. The deficiency in production of progesterone was shown first to be the cause of luteal phase deficiency as mentioned by Professor uh, uh, Badawi. We will talk about the role of progesterone in management of luteal phase deficiency, uh, which is responsible for a great number of infertility and early pregnancy loss due to inadequate secretory transformation of endometrium. Later, progesterone was confirmed to be the best and safest method of pr uh, providing luteal phase support in ART. Uh, uh, many uh, publishers uh, try to uh, reach to what is the best management of luteal phase uh, support, especially during uh, in vitro fertilization and in ART. Uh, this is one of the very large uh, uh, theses uh, and publications uh, of uh, uh, recommended by uh, Cochrane database of systematic review. Uh, pro, uh, the background of this progesterone prepared the endometrium for pregnancy by stimulating proliferation in response to human chorionic gonadotrophin uh, produced by corpus luteum in the luteal phase of menstrual cycle. In ART, progesterone and HCG levels are low, so the luteal phase is supported with progesterone. HCG or gonadotropin releasing hormone agonist to improve the implantation and the pregnancy rate. And this is very important uh, for, because you see, sometimes chemical pregnancy, okay, but uh, after that, for implantation of the blastocyst, uh, the problem when the endometrium is not prepared well, uh, termination of pregnancy, spontaneous termination of pregnancy of care. Uh, this is uh, some objective search methods uh, about uh, uh, progesterone and luteal phase uh, support in subfertile women undergoing assisted uh, uh, reproduction. Uh, the main results 
of this uh, randomized control uh, study, uh, HCG, they're trying to uh, make research uh, for uh, the importance and role of HCG uh, in treatment of retail phase in cases of ART, uh, especially IVF, after uh, oocyte retrieval, uh, or giving progesterone versus placebo or no treatment, uh, progesterone versus HCG regimen, uh, or progesterone versus progesterone and estrogen, uh, progesterone versus progesterone and bradypropine uh, uh, releasing hormone agonists, uh, either giving one dose or uh, multiple single dose or multiple dose. Let us to see the uh, net results. Uh, this uh, figures uh, describe the different research as I mentioned HCG, progesterone, progesterone and the placebo, progesterone and HCG, progesterone uh, and uh, uh, both of them. Uh, at the end, what about the end results? The end results and the key of this uh, supplementation of progesterone can given orally, vaginal, or by intramuscular route. Currently, there is no evidence that progesterone is, progesterone is beneficial in natural, unstimulated cycle. Uh, but it is very important for improvement of ART outcome, especially in GNRH, agonist or antagonist stimulation protocol cycles. Intramuscular progesterone is associated with the high serum level and the vaginal progesterone uh, suppositories increase the endometrial tissues. Uh, the current clinical uh, relevance of lithium phase deficiency, this is another opinion, it has been agreed that oral progesterone should not be used for lithium phase support. Only 10% of micronized progesterone is absorbed intact through the GIT, and the pregnancy rate are lower in ART cycles, and in which oral progesterone is administrated compared with those in which vaginal or intramuscular progesterone is used. So, progesterone supplementation in the form of intramuscular injection uh, or uh, vaginal suppository is very important, especially for support of uh, luteal phase uh, until placental progesterone production is adequate. Uh, we have to give this progesterone around until uh, 8 to 12 weeks of gestation until the placenta is starting to grow and can complete the journey of pregnancy. So, progesterone indications in obstetrics, uh, we can use uh, in cases of threatened abortion, recurrent abortion and miscarriage, and preterm labor. Uh, progesterone for treating threatened abortion. Uh, uh, the, this is a Cochrane database systematic review in uh, 2011. The use of uh, progesterone is effective in the treatment of threatened miscarriage with no evidence of increased rate of pregnancy-induced hypertension or antipartum hemorrhage as harmful effect to the mother, nor increased occurrence of congenital anomalies on the newborn. Why? Because somebody uh, mentioned uh, in uh, one very small uh, uh, not under evidence based that there is some congenital anomalies, especially in the genital organs of the male, uh, in the form of hypospedias like that. But most of uh, the published uh, papers uh, they uh, reject uh, or didn't mention any congenital anomalies on the new form. However, the analysis was limited by a small number and the poor methodology quality uh, and the small number of participants 
which limit the power of this meta uh, analysis. Uh, uh, there is uh, another trial uh, of progesterone in women with recurrent miscarriage, uh, PROMISE trial. PROMISE trial and uh, PRISM trial. This PROMISE trial, this large multi-center randomized placebo-controlled trial, showed that progesterone therapy in the first trimester of pregnancy didn't result in significant increase in the rate of live births among women with history of unexplained recurrent uh, miscarriage. In spite of, he made another uh, uh, search, uh, what's called PRISM, uh, uh, and found that progesterone uh, treatment show a statistically significant decrease in miscarriage rate compared to placebo or no treatment. But there is no significant difference in the rate of fetal first neonatal death or fetal uh, genital anomalies. Uh, virilization were found between progestogen therapy versus placebo. Uh, uh, this is very important. We didn't use uh, progestogen uh, therapy because this is a synthetic progesterone. Usually uh, we use micronized progesterone because this is natural. Uh, progesterone uh, with uh, no uh, or uh, no evidence of uh, fetal genital anomalies. Uh, this promises study, a uh, large multi-center study uh, in women with unexplained recurrent miscarriage, uh, 45 hospitals in UK and the Netherlands and Holland. Uh, they found 3% higher uh, life birth rate with progesterone, but with the statistically uncertainty. Uh, PRISM studied uh, also a large number uh, of women with early pregnancy bleeding uh, uh, at 48 hospitals in the UK. They found there is 5% increase in the number of babies born to those who were given progesterone who had previously uh, one or more miscarriage compared to those uh, given uh, a placebo. The benefit was even greater for women who had previous recurrent miscarriage, two or more uh, miscarriage. Uh, there is a 15% increase in the live birth rate in the progesterone group compared to placebo group. This is the methodology of uh, uh, placebo, uh, of a promise and uh, prism uh, and the analysis uh, of uh, the search. Uh, they, in promise trial, they give vaginal micronized progesterone to women with unexplained recurrent uh, miscarriage. Uh, here, micronized progesterone, as I mentioned, this is natural progesterone, uh, 400 milligram given vaginally uh, twice daily uh, for six weeks until uh, more after six weeks uh, gestational age until 12 weeks of uh, the, uh, gestation and they compared the result. Uh, the, the importance of this promise and present, there are a lot of multi-center studies uh, in Europe, especially in UK and the Netherlands. And so this is give the confidence and the powerful uh, of the, uh, the results. Uh, if you would like to talk about progesterone and the preterm labor, many studies have examined the use of progesterone for prevention of uh, preterm labor. Uh, McKinsey et al. found uh, the use of that, the use of progestin in women at risk for preterm labor reduce its occurrence by 43% may be the cause to prevent or decrease the apoptosis of the fetal membrane. So, and the pro-inflammatory uh, substance 
So it will decrease the incidence of preterm uh, labor and the preterm birth. Uh, another study meta-analysis by Dodge et al. concluded that women who receive progesterone were statistically significantly uh, less likely to give birth before 37 weeks to have an infant with birth weight more than uh, two and a half kilos or to have an infant diagnosed with intraventricular hemorrhage. Their analysis showed no apparent benefit uh, to early start of progesterone administration or in the use of higher uh, doses. Uh, so, for preterm labor, lack of available data for many neonatal outcome and follow up of this neonatal outcome are variable and about the lack of comparative data on dosing and route of administration. Indication for prophylactic progesterone uh, in previous spontaneous preterm labor or short cervix less than one and a half millimeter at 22 to 26 weeks gestation or transvaginal uh, on transvaginal ultrasound. This is very important. The therapy should be started after 20 weeks gestation and the stop when the risk of prematurity is low. Uh, uh, if we would like to talk about the routes of administration, either oral or vaginal suppository and cream and gel, uh, deep intramuscular injections, and as I mentioned, for vaginal suppositories, cream and gel, uh, and deep intramuscular injection are uh, very effective than uh, oral treatment, especially in miscarriage and in preterm uh, labor. Uh, if you would like to talk about the side effects of progestational agents for natural micronized progesterone, uh, fatigue, sometimes uh, malaise, uh, but we are talking about natural. Usually we use natural progesterone, micronized progesterone, during pregnancy. There is no role for synthetic progestins in pregnancy. Why? Because the side effects are large and many, like acne, alopecia, fluid retention, hirsutism, uh, abdominal bloating, anxiety, depression, uh, myelagia, uh, edema. So usually in, during pregnancy, we use only natural micronized progesterone. Uh, please, before take any medicine, uh, the doctor and the patient must know the history if there is any past history or family history of liver tumors, severe liver impairment, genital or breast cancer, uh, severe uh, uh, arterial disease, undiagnosed vaginal bleeding, history during pregnancy of idiopathic jaundice, severe periuritis, uh, missed or incomplete abortion, hypersensitivity. Uh, so uh, here the history is very important. Uh, very important to know that progesterone may cause some fluid retention. So in patients with epilepsy, hypertension, migraine, cardiac or renal dysfunction, uh, susceptibility for uh, thromboembolism, uh, liver impairment, history of depression. Uh, we have also to know uh, and uh, take the um, the condition very meticulous. Uh, progesterone, as any medicine, has some side effects. It decreases the glucose tolerance and diabetes should be monitored, uh, monitored closely. Why I mention that? Because some patients uh, went to the pharmacy to take progesterone uh, as uh, a subital hamil for maintenance of pregnancy whatever is it indicated or not indicated. Uh, they didn't know the side effects or complication of the medicine. They didn't take any consultation from doctors. So please don't you take any medicine except after consultation of your doctor. 
uh, one of very important question is progesterone safe no significant difference in the rate of neonatal deaths or fetal genital anomalies uh, genital anomalies between progesterone therapy versus placebo control also there is no studies reported about any effect or a serious paternal uh, effect. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Afef, for this comprehensive presentation. Now you can uh, watch a short video about technopharmaceutical pregnancy support portfolio. And then uh, after that, uh, we uh, will have uh, the Q&A session. Thank you, Professor uh, Ahmed, and thank you, Professor Afif, uh, for uh, this great uh, presentation. Thank you for the attendees. And uh, now we will have uh, the Q&A session. The first uh, question for uh, Dr. Ahmed. 
uh, can we use cycloprogonova to regulate the cycle at the same time counteract the unfavorable effect of the clonfin on the cervix and the endometrium? Um, سواء كان concomitant أو before uh, definitely هو الفكرة الأساسية هو أنه يبقى عندي high level of estrogen which is going to suppress the ovulation so it's going to suppress uh, the uh, androgens LH and then the estrogen the cyclopregenova definitely هو أقل في الفعالية من الأورال contraceptive البوينت الثانية هو ممكن نستخدمه لأنه في بعض الزمر بيستخدموه in concomitants يعني في نفس الوقت اللي بتستخدم فيه سايكلوبيجينوم علشان الكونجيجيتد اكوان استروجين او الـ او الاسترا دايو وات ايفر اللي احنا اف يو لايك تو يوز يوز ذا اورال كونتراسبتيفز مش السايكلوبيجينوم اوكي Type another question, a question about how to uh, avoid the hyperstimulation that may occur with the clonfin trait. Um, the chance of having uh, hyperstimulation with clonfin trait is minimal. Uh, with severe hyperstimulation, less than one percent. With tip a personal issue, with the eyes, do be a few mutation of the FSH receptors which are present inside the ovary. <تصفيق> ففكرة انه العيانة هيحصل لها اوفيريان هايبر سيميليشن سكولوميثين ساتريت استثناء شديد يعني. And we don't count on. Uh, just give الكولوميثين ساتريت ما تخافش من العيانة. Uh, زي ما انا قلت انه لو انت فيري سكابتيك ان العيانة دي فيها مالتيبل سمول فوليكلز وانت خايف ان يحصل لها ستارت ليت. ستارت بعد الداي 3. يعني داي 4 اور داي 5. لو ما انتش قلقان ابتدي دايما داي 1 تو داي 3. انما فكرة يعني I use it very frequently, very huge number of patients I saw. Uh, I can't remember one or two cases with hyperstimulation with chromatin uh, So I think it's not only on the clock. Okay. Uh, the question for the Professor Afif. Uh, can I use uh, progesterone in a dysfunctional drain in bleeding and after menopause? Yes, sure. This will be very important, especially for dysfunctional uterine bleeding. Mean, dysfunctional uterine bleeding means you have to exclude all causes of abnormal uterine bleeding. So we can use, especially uh, from day, for example, uh, 14, uh, for two weeks, uh, no problem. Uh, during menopause, it's very important. Uh, why? Why you will use, uh, would you like to use uh, progestine? In menopause, if there is any problem of endometrial hyperplasia or fibroid or anything, well, why we will use? Yani, you're asking about the indication of use of progestin or progesterone during menopause. Menopause, this is a normal stage in life, except if there is symptomatology or any indication for use of medicine. Okay, so. What's your question? I am asking you, Dr. Adwa. Yes, the question is how, yani, how you can he's use the progesterone for the menopause or the uh, uterine bleeding? No, you, for uterine bleeding, this is one question. Uterine bleeding during menopause, yani post menopausal bleeding, or yes. menopausal bleeding? No, the uterine bleeding within the menopause. Yani post menopausal bleeding. Yes. You have to, number one, you have to exclude any malignancy. You see, this is number one. Number two, by other investigations. For example, uh, you have to take history, examination, ultrasound. Uh, you can do a fractional carotage uh, according to the condition. If there is no cause, but For example, if there is increased little bit in the endometrium or there is endometrial hyperplasia diagnosed by histopathology, we can use progesterone for protection. You understand me of this condition? Okay. Uh, 
Another question about the dose of the progesterone in a preterm labor and the duration. For uh, preterm labor, it depends uh, when it started this preterm labor, but it's better to use uh, after 20 or around 20 weeks of gestation until the timing of previous preterm labor. And you have to pass this time. Yani, for example, if the patient uh, had a preterm labor uh, at 32 weeks, you have to continue after 32 weeks. Understand? Uh, my uh, aim uh, or vision yani, to reach as much as we can to the maturity, at least to 36, 37 weeks of gestation. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Afif. Uh, Dr. Ahmed? Uh, is it useful to use metformin for unmarried girl uh, diagnosed as having insulin resistance? Uh, definitely yes, definitely yes. Metformin, uh, one of the indications of metformin uh, for the teenage uh, polycystic ovary is going to improve the hyperandrogenic state, is going to improve the uh, ovulation and the regularity of the cycle. Uh, definitely it's one of the lines. Okay, another question uh, that uh, the use of the uh, COC before the clomphene uh, cycle might be beneficial, as uh, Dr. Ahmed mentioned. Do you recommend, uh, in this case, newer generation with more powerful anti-androgenic uh, effect? Um, as, as, as it's a very good question. Definitely, I am in الحاجات اللي موجودة في السوق اللي هي بتحتوي على 30 micrograms of phenyl estradiol is going to work يعني إنه الفكرة الأساسية عندنا is to, to suppress the hypothalamus hypophysial ovarian axis وبالتالي أي حاجة 30 يعني أنا محتاج حاجة at least 30 microgram uh, phenyl estradiol دي point إنك تستخدمي حاجة of low androgenic activity في عيانة already hyper androgenic definitely it's a recommendation فلو هتستخدمي حاجة فيها لو أندروجينيك بروجستيرون دفنتلي it's much better uh, Can I ask question uh, Dr. Ahmed uh, usually you use COC during the cycle of induction or uh, of ovulation or one or two cycles before uh, uh, لا أنا بستخدمه uh, إذا هستخدمه بستخدمه from one to three cycles before the cycle of induction يعني الثلاث شهور اللي قبل اللي قبل الدكتور اوكي ذا ذا كويستشن فور دكتور عفاف ذا ديفرنس بين الاورال والفاجينال اند ريكتال بروجسترون ان اللويتيل في سبورت يا فور لوتيل في سبورت اكوردنج تو ذا ايفيدنس اند ليتريتشرز uh, the intramuscular injection and vaginal suppository or cream uh, in the absorption uh, give the most or the best biological effect, especially uh, in the blood, up to 70% absorption. Uh, for the oral, uh, the GIT absorption of the medicine around 10 to 20% uh, according to the uh, publication of previous literatures and research. So it's better to give intramuscular or vaginal suppositories uh, in their phase defect. I would like to know the opinion of uh, Dr. Professor Dr. Ahmed. Um, uh, the oral uh, common the uh, tail of the list, uh, definitely intramuscular, vaginal, and director roots come first. Do you recommend the face support after uh, simple induction of ovulation or not? A simple induction of ovulation. If the mm. patient has the history, or she had irregularity, or long term of infertility, or already proved that she had luteal phase uh, defects, we have to give support even in induction of simple induction of ovulation. But if I give induction of ovulation just 
uh, random or empirical or to improve the number of follicle and give her more chance, uh, I think there is no uh, need to wait. Okay. Okay. Hi. The question for uh, Dr. Ahmed, please, doctor, you said endometriosis and the infertility is a surgical disease. You mean, you mean it or I didn't understand? اه ده انا دايما اقول في المحاضرات بتاعه الاندومتيوزس انه العيانه بتاعه الاندومتيوزس هتيجي تشتكي من واحد من حاجتين اساسيتين يا انفرتيليتي يا بين يو كان نوت تريت بوث ات ذا سيم تايم بين كود بي تريتد ويز ميديكيشن وذر هرمونال او نون ستيرويد انتي انفلاماتوري او ايفر وده از جوينج تو كومبرومايز هير فيرتيليتي العيانه بتاعه الانفرتيليتي دي ميديكيشنز هاز نو رول ان لو العيانه بتاعت الانفرتيليتي خدت هرمونال تريتمنت او خدت جوناتروفين ريزنج هرمون اجونست از جوينج تو امبروف هارت بين بس جوينج تو ايه اندومتيوز ويز انفرتيليتي از جوينج تو بي تريتد سيرجيكالي يعني هتتعالج بالمنظار او هنعمل لها اي بي اف اتسيتي انما لو جت تشتكي من بين اي كان يوز الميديكيشن سي سو ذس از ا ميديكال ديزيز ذس از سيرجيكالي اوكي استاذه ممكن تقولي يعني فين عند سوري الصوت بيقطع يا دكتوره دعاء هي دي المشكله اللي قابلتنا في النت يا رب تكون المحاضره لان شفت كان كان في بعض التقطيع في النت جامد المهم آه. لا بالنسبه للاندومتريوزس وات ايفر اذا كان في انفرتيليتي اور بين انفورشنتلي يوجوالي دايجنوزس اوف اندومتريوزس تو ليت Uh, and uh, most of uh, colleagues diagnosed endometriosis after uh, the condition become more progressive. And sometimes it's not, uh, maybe the lesion is very small or sporadic or whatever, and cause no pain. And if you make laparoscopy or laparotomy for any reason, you can find a lot of adhesions, a lot of pathological problems. Uh, and sometimes, Nothing at all, you understand me? So I support uh, Professor Ahmed. Uh, if there is infertility and severe pain, no way. This is a surgical intervention. But then only without any other manifestation by examination or ultrasound, so we can give medical treatment. Okay. Uh, uh, I, I do agree, I do agree. Uh, can it have idea also for the question or the notion that So when no, if the patient is coming for infertility, so medications is going uh, not to play any role, it's going to hinder the fertility. And then you will go for surgery or IVF. If the patient is coming for pain, this is her main presentation, is the pain, then medications can play a role. In we can to treat both together unless we are going to do surgery straight away. Okay, thank you, uh, Dr. Ahmed. The last quest question for Dr. Ahmed, how to deal with resistance and rupture follicle even after give, giving a B passy uh, 500 international unit injection? Can, uh, can I give another one or not? The question is, you have a patient with ovulation induction, and you have 5,000 women in the HCG, she didn't ovulate. Are we going to give another uh, injection to her or not? Um, it's 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 a very uh, a good question. We may lose the data, محددة علشان تبي عارفة إن في trials بتقول آه إن the poster dose of the HCG can do the ovulation. To my mind, لا لو العيانة دي تيها خمسة آلاف واحدة and then she didn't ovulate, هيبقى حصل أتريزيا لل In the whole site, the second dose is not going to help you. In the last few days, I'm really not the story. If I see the same story happen again, the patient will be able to benefit from you to do the drilling because the relevant results of ovulation are very thick tissue and collagen. So the drilling, the patient will be able to benefit. I don't believe in the booster dose. Meaning, if I raise it from 5,000 to 10,000, the simple induction, simple induction, is going to improve the ovulation. No, I don't believe in it. Okay. Uh, thank you, Professor Ahmed. Thank you, Professor Afif. Uh, thank you for uh, your attendance, Doctor. And inshallah, we'll see you for webinars. Gaya, Urayb, Thank you. Thank you.
شکرم شکرم